If you want smooth pockets right off your CNC with no sanding, this bit is the secret. In this video, we're taking a deep dive into bowl and tray bits. What they are, when to use them, how to program them and set it up in your software, and we'll be cutting a real project and making some sawdust. Everything I'm sharing in this video comes from cutting thousands of bowls, trays, and catch-alls over the last 10 years in my shop using this exact bit. Let's get right into it. So what is a bowl and tray bit and why should you use it? Well, a bowl and tray bit has a flat bottom and a radius edge, and they're great for, well, bowls and trays. And the reason you would use them as opposed to a regular end mill is because of that radius edge. And it just really makes your products pop a ton more. And so here's a couple trays that we have done using that bowl and tray bit. The most common sizes you'll see are a three quarter inch bowl and tray with a quarter inch radius and a seven sixteenths or half inch, depending on what company you're getting them from, with an eighth inch radius tip. And another unique use case for them is actually doing juice grooves. And so we use a seven sixteenths bowl and tray bit doing juice grooves on color core because I like the way it looks and we use it on all of our cutting boards as well. So let's talk about how these are designed and why I like to go through this process and for you to understand it is you wanna have that pyramid of knowledge, right? That wealth of knowledge and you really want to have a solid base. So I'm gonna be talking about how a three quarter inch diameter, quarter inch radius bowl and tray is designed. So imagine these are half inch diameter circles or quarter inch radius. Well they come right here on the bit design and leave that beveled edge just like this bit right here. But if you notice that they don't actually touch and so there is a flat spot in here that starts about there and there and what it ends up looking like is this, a nice flat bottom on your bit. So what that flat spot's gonna do is allow you to eat away a lot of material and so it doesn't take forever. This is so important to know how big that flat spot is because that's going to determine what's the maximum amount you can step over and still have a flat bottom, right? And so if I was to step over 100% of the bit, which is a 100% step over, you're gonna end up with these wave-like structures right here at the bottom of your bowl and tray because why? That radius is cutting and then it's gonna step over and cut right here. Then it's gonna step over and cut right here. It's very important to understand where that is. Now on a three quarter inch wide bowl and tray bit with a quarter inch radius, you have right here is going to be 0.25 inches because you have that half inch diameter circle with that quarter inch radius right there. This other side, you're gonna have 0.25 inches as well, which means the center point right here is going to be also 0.25 inches of flatness. So 0.25 of three quarters is 33%. And so the max step over you can do and still have a flat bottom is 33%. Now, if we do that exact same exercise for a 7 16th diameter bit with an eighth inch radius on it, guess what we're gonna get? So this whole entire bit right here, seven sixteenths. And the eighth inch radius right here is gonna take away one eighth of an inch from seven sixteenths, which is two sixteenths, which eighth inch. And so what you're left with in the center is three sixteenths of an inch. The max step over you can do with a seven sixteenths bit is going to be around 40%. So let's back off a little bit, call it 35%, right? Now there's some advanced tips that I can talk about later and if you do want me to make that advanced tip video where I talk about really detailed intricate stuff that we use on the manufacturing shop where we make hundreds and hundreds of these and sell them on Amazon, let me know. I have a ton of tips I can go into there. This one, I just wanna get you rolling, get you understanding how this works and how you can stick it on your CNC and click go a lot faster. So now let's go into the designing part of it so I can show you how to set up your bit and how to correctly program it in your software. So the first thing we're going to do is set it up in our tool database. The easiest way is just to download it from cicworkshop.com 
and you're automatically gonna have all three of our bowl and tray bits in there. If not, whenever you add a bit, classify a bowl and tray as a radius end mill, and you could put the diameter of the bit there and the radius there, and it's very simple setting creation. So bowl and tray bits are classified as radius end mills on your tool databases. Now, let's get to programming. So we'll just be programming a simple star, just like this. The biggest thing with any bowl and tray bit is that the diameter does become a factor, so whenever you are programming it, understand that it cannot get in very tight corners. So you have to come by with a fillet tool and actually trim down these edges. So since we're using a three quarter inch bit, we're going to use a three eighths radius, come by there and just radius all of the outside edges. You do not have to do these edges because that bit can go by and cut on the other side of it, no problem. Now to make this a tray, we're just going to do a simple outwards offset of a half inch and boom, you have your tray. Now programming these is pretty simple. It is just a pocket tool path. We're just gonna select that three quarter bowl and tray bit. We're going down a half inch, four passes sounds good. And you always want to do a ramp as well. Now this is where most people, in my opinion, get it wrong because they do it this way. And whenever you do it this way, what happens is you have, you can see the bit because it's crossing a whole bunch of different grain patterns, right? And so what I like to do is actually do it with a raster and I do a profile pass last. And what that looks like is like this. And so now you can actually adjust it to whatever the grain pattern is. And so there's a lot less sanding involved here. So if your grain pattern is vertical, just switch this to 90 degrees and it will go vertical and that's going to help you make a lot better bowls and trays. And then once again, we're just cutting all this out and there you have our beautiful, beautiful star. Now let's just say we did not have a 30% step over. Let's say we did a 70% step over using this bit and we use that offset. Let's see what we'd get. You get a whole bunch of humps like that whenever you cut out your tray, which is not good. So the first tool path I'm gonna run is going to be the wrong way to do it. Let's run it and I'll show you why. So once again, this was the wrong way because the step over exceeded that flat part of the bit. And then I also did an offset tool path, which you can get away with, but I personally like to use a raster. That way I go with the grain. And this Bamex material that we're using today, we sell on CIC Workshop. It's great for bowls and trays and really any project. Well, the grain will vary on the second layer. So the grain goes like this on the second layer, on the top layer, it goes like this. And another thing to note is that because once again, this is so wide, I'm not trying to run this at 100 or 200 inches a minute, right? That is a lot of pressure on that quarter inch hardened steel shank. And so I was going 60 inches a minute and an eighth inch depth of pass, which is quite a bit and this bamboo is about the same hardness as a maple. And so that'll give you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of something to go off of. So now we're gonna run it the correct way where it's going to do a raster with the grain and have a smaller step over, which means one, it's going to have a better bottom and two, it's gonna have a little less pressure on that shank because it's not taking off as much material left and right at a time. All right, let's run it.
All right, so I just paused the machine because there's two other things I forgot to talk about and this is like a perfect point to talk about them. So another cool thing about it doing that raster last is that it doesn't take off a lot of material when it comes and does that final cleanup pass on all the outside. And we have found that that leaves the best edges on a bowl or a tray that you're doing. The next thing is about the cutting height. So our three quarter inch diameter bit has a five eighths cutting height. And the reason for that is most of y'all guys work with three quarter inch material and you always like to leave a quarter inch back on it. And so we did it just a little bit above a half inch depth of cut. That way you can come in here and do this half inch pocket like I'm doing right now. And it's gonna leave nice clean edges. So I'm gonna click go and watch how it barely takes off any material, but it's gonna leave a really nice finish doing it the raster method instead of the offset method. Yep. So setting up that raster to do the bottom with the grain really does produce a nice finish. Having it come around those edges last makes a nice crisp clean edge. And if I wanted this tray to level up even more, I would take a quarter inch point cutter before I cut it all out and actually bevel and round over this inside edge and this outside edge. And it's really gonna make this tray pop. And so if you're interested in doing that, I do have a full video over the quarter inch point cutter. I'll leave a link down in the description. It is a really cool versatile bit that I hope you guys have in your bit arsenal. We do have a full bowl and tray bit set for you guys. And so it's gonna include a three quarter inch bowl and tray, a 7 16 bowl and tray, and that quarter inch point cutter, all with a quarter inch shank. That way you have everything you need to make whatever size bowl and tray you want and whatever size juice groove you need, whether it's in a cutting board or some of that color core right over there. So I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.